Hi everyone, this is Daryl and welcome back to Book Odyssey. Today I'm going to be reviewing the third book in the Dune saga, Children of Dune by Frank Herbert. I must not fear. Fear is the mind killer. Fear is the little death that brings total obliteration. I will face my fear. I will permit it to pass over me and through me. And when it has gone past, I will turn the inner eye to see its path. Where the fear has gone, there will be nothing. Only I will remain. Children of Dune is a 1976 science fiction novel by Frank Herbert, the third in his Dune saga of six novels. At the end of the previous book, Dune Messiah, Paul Atreides walked into the desert, a blind man, leaving his twin children, Leto and Ganema, in the care of the Fremen, while his sister Aaliyah ruled the universe as regent. Awakened in the womb by the spice, the children are the heirs to Paul's prescient vision of the fate of the universe, a role that Aaliyah desperately craves. House Carino schemes to return to the throne, while the Bene Gesserit make common cause with the Tilaxu and the Spacing Guild to gain control of the Spice and the children of Paul Atreides. Children of Dune is set nine years after Emperor Paul Muad'Dib walked into the desert, set within an Arrakis dealing with the loss of Muad'Dib and a changing green environment. The story follows twins Ganema and Leto as the Lady Jessica returns to Arrakis to discover whether her daughter and regent Aaliyah has succumbed to the possession known as Abomination. Meanwhile, amid the shifting political sands, a new religious figure called the Preacher has risen in the desert, rallying against the religious government's injustices and changes among the Fremen. Children of Dune was originally serialised in analogue science fiction and fact in 1976 and was the last Dune novel to be serialised before book publication. Initially selling over 75,000 copies, it became the first hardcover bestseller in the science fiction field. The novel was critically well received for its gripping plot, action and atmosphere and was nominated for the Hugo Award for Best Novel in 1977. Leto sighed. To turn his back on his father was like betraying a god. But the Atreides empire needed shaking up. It had fallen into the worst of Paul's vision. How casually it obliterated men. It was done without a second thought. The mainspring of a religious insanity had been wound tight and left ticking. One of the major concepts and themes in Children of Dune, which is an extension that runs throughout the first two books, is one of ecological transformation. Unlike the first two books, however, the ecological transformation that is happening on Arrakis has reached the point where some Fremen are living without still suits in the less arid climate and have started to move out of the desert and into villages and cities. This leads to some negative consequences for the delicate ecosystem that exists on the world but also arguably for the culture of the Fremen people too. As living on the once hard and arid world becomes easier, the old ways begin to erode, something that doesn't sit well with many Fremen. There are fears that the Fremen people are becoming soft, and while they still cling to Paul like a religion, they have moved away from his values. It's because of this a new religious figure called the Preacher rises from the desert, protesting loudly against the religious government's injustices and changes among the Fremen. Another theme within the book looks at the consequences of mixing religion and government and how corruption has bred in the various factions. It's also in Children of Dune that we learn more about the Golden Path, an optimum path through the countless threads of cause and effect contained in the events of the past, present and future. A past that Paul Atreides, who had already glimpsed this future, refused to take at the end of Dune Messiah. There's also a great sense of Herbert deepening the history, mythology and mystique of the Duneverse, layering the already complex world by building new elements upon it. It is with reason and terrible experience that we call the pre-born abomination. For who knows what lost and damned persona out of our evil past may take over the living flesh. The characters in Children of Dune have all changed, mostly. They have evolved in the space from where we left them in Dune Messiah, and this is something I really enjoyed. If you watch my videos often, you'll probably know that the Lady Jessica is one of my top 10 favourite characters of all time, so no doubt you won't be surprised to learn that I was really excited that Jessica returns to Arrakis for this novel. And she doesn't disappoint. 
I feel like that not only do we get to know Jessica all over again, but we get to know her better, revealing to us sides of herself that were either not there in June or just never revealed. Without going too much into spoilers, I felt there was a new vulnerability to Jessica as we explored her character even more, and I found that I really enjoyed this growth. I will also go into Aaliyah a little bit more in the spoiler part of the video, but overall there was an element of tragedy to this character that I found gripping right from the beginning. In fact, many of the characters are or seem to be trapped by their individual fates, and as the reader you can almost see where it will lead them if they continue, and you're just willing them to not, but, you know, stuff. Writing-wise, I really get on with Herbert's style and his usual quality of language doesn't fail to paint epic word pictures in the third in the Dune saga. He uses an omnipresent narrative style, meaning the narration can be aware of more than one character's point of view at one time. Traditionally, I don't really like this style because I find it takes me out of the character and adds a bit of author intrusion, which I'm never really a fan of but I understand completely why Herbert takes this approach. There are so many strands and thought processes happening within the plot, so that to stick to a single point of view in any given scene would mean that we lose a lot of the internal thought process and motivation that is essential to understanding the character's actions. Okay, next I'm going to be going into my spoiler part of the review. If you don't want to watch this, you can skip ahead to the time that's showing at the bottom of the screen now to get my star rating and my overall thoughts. There's an air of tragedy throughout Children of Dune that was both really sad and also amazing from a reader's perspective. Does that make me a sociopath? Yeah. Basically, what remains of the Atreides family are at war. Things have shifted so that everything that Paul worked to achieve in the first two books has been undermined. The government under Aaliyah has become authoritarian in its mixing of religion and state, and the terraforming of Dune, we learn, will kill all the sandworms, destroying the source of the spice, something Harkonnen desires through his possession of Aaliyah. Despite this, I felt an immense sense of compassion for Aaliyah, even though she's arguably the main antagonist for the book. I was really rooting for her to somehow exercise her possession and reunite with her mother, the Lady Jessica. And there was a scene when we finally know each other's intentions and Jessica tries to assassinate Jessica that I found really intense. Like, Red Wedding intense. So, I really enjoyed that. Another character that I felt had grown and changed since we left her in Dune Messiah was Paul's wife, Irulan. She was another character that I ended up feeling quite sorry for because I got the sense that she was basically defenceless against these powerful Atreides giants that seemed to surround her. Also, thinking back, I wonder if Messiah and Children of Dune should have actually been one book, as it feels like that this is part two to Dune Messiah's part one. I got this sense too when we discovered that the preacher turns out to be Paul Atreides, yet yeah, also not Paul Atreides, I mean, firstly, what a great twist. We think Paul is dead, and then maybe he's not. And then we know he's not. And then he gets killed. For real this time? Question mark, question mark, question mark. But speaking of epic, I love a good level up in a character's power. So Leto sacrificing his humanity in the pursuit of the Golden Path really did it for me. The climax I actually found to be quite sad, possibly because I'd been feeling really sorry for Aaliyah throughout, so when she manages to commit suicide and by throwing herself off a balcony, it wasn't really a hurrah moment for me, it was much sadder. I felt Aaliyah's life was tragic in her loss of love and in its corruption, and there was something extremely lonely about her. Ironically, Jessica, who throughout June had been a Bene Gesserit badass, evolved in this novel to become more human than any of her family, at least more human than what they all became. Children of Dune takes the already complex and imaginative Duneverse and expands upon it, steering us away from a typical hero's journey into something much darker and more subverted. Its unparalleled world building, complex characterization, political intrigue, mixed with a science fiction mystique, makes this book more than a worthy successor to both Dune and Dune Messiah, pushing the story forward in unexpected ways. With this in mind, I seriously had no choice but to give Children of Dune 
five stars out of five. So that's it for this review. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to smash the like button if you enjoyed the video and subscribe for more videos from me. Until next time guys, happy reading.